Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the R Cloud Infrastructure CLI like a pro. And I'm going to, you know, share a few things with you around the use cases, uh, you know, when and where you can use the Auto Cloud Infrastructure CLI to make your life easier. And we are going to wrap up with a hands-on so that we can see that in the practice. Ready? Okay, so before we get started, I would like to ask you, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, enable the notification so that you can be notified whenever I release new content. And please be sure to follow us on Instagram. It is thecloudbootcamp.english. So please uh, make sure you follow us in there. I share you know, a few things during the day with you guys. So it's gonna be awesome to have all of you there. Okay, so let's jump into the content now. So basically, if you think about the, the ways that you have to operate the other cloud infrastructure, we could say that we have basically three ways, right? The first one is you can operate the OCI using the UI or the user interface through your browser. The second way that you have is basically you can use the, the CLI or the command line interface, the OCI CLI. And the third way is uh, using the APIs and the SDKs, right? Where you can basically tie those codes into your application code, whether programming via Python, Java, whatever SDK is available on OCI, you can basically put this SDK together with your code and you can create some uh, really good or fancy automation using the OCI SDKs along with your application code if you would like to do so, right? But today I would like to focus more on the OCI CLI, which is uh, like I mentioned, right? It is a way that you have to operate OCI using a command line interface. And then it is pretty useful if you think about that, right? And before I show you uh, that happening in the practice, I would like to first discuss a few things in the use cases that you might get across when you use the OCI CLI. And the first one is is literally automation, right? So if you think about that, uh, if you think about the on use case for using the OCI CLI for automating stuff, let's think about one quick scenario in here, right? Let's think that uh, one company or one client would like to automate the instances shutdown and start up. So let's say that the development instances should be six o'clock in the evening after the business hours, and you would like to bring it up those instances before the business hours kick off, let's say like at 8 a.m. in the morning so that the instances are available, right? One use case for that is basically, like I mentioned, the development instances, because if you think about that, usually the developers after the business hours, they are not going to use the development environment. And then those instances will be completely idle. But as we know in the cloud, you are uh, built whenever you are using the resources, right? So if you want to save money, in the cloud, you should consider to do a few things, you know, in order to allow you to save money. And one of the things is basically you can shut down the instances and once the instances are down, you're not going to be built for the instance, right? I'm not talking about the block storage. It's a different story, of course, but I'm talking about the instances. You're not going to be built for the instances, for the OCPUs that are associated with your instances. And one thing that you can do, of course, is shut down those instances, you know, after business hours and then bring them up once you know the business hours in the next day start so that your developers can work on those environments as well right so that is the one use case that we'd like to share with you today and the second one of course is if you would like to optimize your work right so the ui is awesome the ui is great but if you would like to do you know really um mass scale operations like if you would like to do really a lot of stuff in the OCR like stopping many databases or patching many databases or you know if you'd like to upload uh, some files to some object storage OCI bucket you should consider using the OCI CLI for that because the UI probably you have to keep clicking in the buttons and then you know dealing with the drag and drop usually that's not very optimal if you want to do things in a large scale right if you agree with me so those are the two main use cases that I can highlight for using the OCI CLI. 
okay? So now that you have a little bit of information in terms of uh, use cases and when you should use the OCI CLI, let's jump into the hands-on so that we can see it in the practice. Okay, cool. So the first thing that you need to do, of course, to use the OCI CLI is to install it. And for installing the OCI, I like to use the OCI official documentation. So let me go there and show you. Basically, you can browse to docs.oracle.com. And once you are then at docs.oracle.com, you just come here and click on the cloud infrastructure button. And once you see the OCI documentation, just click on the developer resources area. And then inside of the developer resources area, you click in the SDKs and CLI and the CLI is right here is the last option just click in there and there you go here is the documentation that you should use for installing the CLI on your computer so if you're using a Mac for example like I am you have a special procedure for that like Mac and Linux users so if you click here in the kickstart in the left hand side you're going to see that you have the installing the CLI for pretty much all the platforms right so if you're using Mac Linux and Unix you can uh, use this option if you're using Windows you can follow those instructions and so on and so forth right I've already done the installation here in my Mac so basically you know just minimal steps so very easy to install now what we need to do before being able to use the CLI we need to configure it and during the configuration you're going to configure the CLI to authenticate with OCI as well so for doing that we're going to use the token based authentication now you can just click here on the third option token based authentication and you're going to see the options or the steps that you need to follow to configure the OCI CLI and to, of course, configure your username and password so that the OCI CLI can allow you to access the OCI resources in your tenancy, of course. So basically here, as you can see, you know, it's very easy to authenticate using the token-based CLI session methodology. Just two steps. The first step you need to do is just go ahead and run the OCI session authenticate in your terminal so that's what i'm going to do right now so i'm just going to run oci session authenticate because i already have the oci cli installed in here on my mac so once i hit enter it is basically going to ask me what is my home region right my home region is uh us phoenix one and i just gave it and as you can see it is going to open immediately the browser so that you can provide your username and a password to authenticate yourself and make sure that the OCI CLI have all the token information required to allow you to list and manipulate your resources on OCI based of course on your IAM permissions okay so basically you just need to authenticate as you do so because my browser already has the other configuration my username and a password as you can see I'm already authenticated so it is going to show you a message like this saying that authentication is completed and then you can close the window window and return to the terminal to finish the configuration process that's what we are going to do now so just go ahead and close this tab and come back to the terminal and then as you can see it is saying that the browser authentication process has been completed and then now the only thing that you need to do is to give a profile name that the OCI CLI is going to create and what is the profile name basically the profile name is going to allow you to have multiple OCI CLI configuration let's say that you work in different tenancies for different companies companies or customers, then you can have a profile for each tenancy, for example, right? So I'm going to say that my profile is going to be named as Jean-OCI. And as you can see, immediately it says that everything has been configured in here. And as you can see, the configuration file is located right here and also you can see that it is already giving you a example as to how you can run the OCI CLI to make sure that everything is working fine so that's exactly what you're going to do now so basically you can go ahead and copy this command in here and before running it let me quickly explain to you what this command is doing actually so basically the OCI is the executable of the OCI CLI and then uh, next you have which type of service you want to uh, handle you 
using the OCR and in that case is the IEM and then we're basically saying list the regions you know that are available for you in the IEM in OCI and then next I'm going to give the config file which is going to have the authentication and authorization information right the token that was created the name of the profile that was created remember that I gave here Jean dash OCI and then finally it is going to provide the authentication method because you know we have different authentication methods for the CLI at this example we are using the token based authentication method okay and then once you have it just hit enter to see if everything is working fine okay so as you can see the response came back we can see all the regions in here so it means that the communication between the CLI and the OCI API is working fine so now what we are going to do is I would like to demonstrate to you the use case that I just mentioned right if you think about a use case where you need to automate the instance shutdown and start up using the CLI for the use case that I just gave you a few minutes ago right let's say that a developer or a development team has a lot of instances and they don't need to use the instances after 6 p.m. o'clock and then they just need to have those instances shut down for you know cost saving reasons right and then before the next business day comes up they need to have those instances up and running as well so that they can continue with their development activities uh, what's happening here we are basically shutting down the instances to save money right to cost you less money in the OCI right and how you could do it right so how you can automate these things using the CLI so it is actually pretty simple we can use the CLI to shut down the instance and to bring it up as well so basically if you want to use the OCI to manipulate any compute resource you need to of course give the OCI command and then you should use the compute for the you know the type of resources and then next you can of course mention instance because you're going to shut down a instance a VM instance right and now if you'd like to see what you can do in terms of instances right which kind of operations you can do inside of instance you can basically type the dash H the dash H will actually give you the manual for the tool right so you can basically get some help and understand better the syntax and the options that you need to provide in order to execute some operation that you'd like to do right so here's the manual usually no one will memorize all the commands so you know that doesn't make any sense so there are a lot you know thousands of commands and options available usually you need to look at the documentation and this is a very quick way to do it so basically as you can see here you can see the available commands for the compute instance option and we're going to focus on action so as you can see the action is one of the available commands and if you want to see what the action does you just scroll down and you see that action has a description right and under the description you see which kind of actions you can perform against a particular instance and we're going to explore the start and stop now which is going to allow us to start and stop a DVM instance okay so in order to start and stop a VM instance all you can do just go ahead and get out of the menu so you can just continue with the command here here, just say OCI compute instance and then you know that the next option that you're going to give is action and inside of the actions if you want to know which kind of parameters you would like to use with action if you are not sure you can again just give the dash H right the dash H will actually show you exactly what you need to have so here is the description you know that you can do those operations and if you would like to see how you can use it you just scroll down to the usage section and then there you go here you see the requirement or the mandatory parameters along with the optional parameters so you can see that one mandatory parameter is the action so whether you want to start or stop for example and the second one is the instance ID right so which is a unique identifier of the instance that you'd like to shut down or start up okay so let's see how these things will work so let's come back in here to the terminal now and then the next thing that we need to give is the action parameter I'm going to say that I'm going to stop and then the next parameter
parameter will be the instance ID, right? Like we saw. Let me come back quickly to the console and see if I have an instance available to demonstrate this. I just can, you know, basically log in here in my tenancy again. I'm going to go now in compute instances and I'm right there on my home region. So probably I should have some instance in here. Yeah, like you can see, I have uh, two instances in here. If you would like to stop any instance, you should have the instance ID or the instance OCID, which is a unique identifier. For you to grab the OCID of the instance, just go ahead and click in the instance. And then here on the right hand side, you see that you have the OCID. If you click in show, you're going to see the ID of the instance. You just need to copy this OCID, right? Just click on the copy button. And then I'm going to make uh, the screen half and a half so that you can see what is going to happen with the instance once the I issued the command, right? Let me make the term now a uh, half of my screen so that you can see both sides. Okay, cool. And then here I'm going to basically uh, patch the OCIG that I copied. And the second thing that we need to do is, of course, we need to provide the configuration file, the path of the configuration file for the OCI CLI, along with the profile name so that the OCLI can know that I would like to execute this action towards the tenancy that was configured during the configuration process. I'm just going to copy these sections in here. And then now I should have the command ready, right? So let me just quickly expand this so that you can see in a full screen so basically as you can see all that I'm doing here is I'm giving the OCI compute instance command and then I'm you know passing the action option and inside of the action option I'm giving a few parameters which the first one is the stop so I'm asking to stop an instance and the second one is the instance ID which is the unique ID for the VM instance that I'm handling now and then next we have the configuration file the profile name and the type of authentication that's all. If you hit enter now, let me make it half a screen. If you hit enter and everything works fine, you should see that uh, now, you know, given that the OCI CLI works in a JSON, the response came back and the JSON response, one of the parameters, it is saying that the instance is stopping. As you can see here on the left side, the instance has already been stopped. Right, so that's how you can stop an instance using the OCI CLI. Now quickly here, if you would like to start up the instance back, very simple, the only change that you need to make on this command is to change the action from stop to start, hit enter, and then you're going to see that the JSON output will come back again, and then it's going to say starting, and then as you can see here on the left hand side, it has already changed to starting status, and after some time, you're going to see that the instance will be running and there you go instance is up and running now and all was done using the OCI CLI so that's how you can fully automate your instance lifecycle process if you like to have these things in a fully automated fashion and one thing that you could do if you'd like to automate that use case that I just mentioned right the shutdown and you start up of the instance in a particular time you could have a script you know like a simple shell script if you want to do more advanced things that will work as well like with Python or anything like that but if you would like to keep the things simple you can basically have a shell script with the OCI CLI commands inside of it and then you can basically schedule that you're using the crown tab of a bastion host a bastion VM or any host that you use for management purposes in your tenancy and there you go everything will work as expected you're going to have your instance lifecycle fully automated using command line interface so which is pretty awesome and i truly hope that you have enjoyed this video and please leave your comment down below tell me which kind of other use cases you can come up with by using the oci cli i would love to hear more from you and also let me know which kind of contents you'd like to see here in this channel i'll be more than happy to make more videos for you guys and if you liked this video please give me your thumbs up that's going to help me a lot and again thank you very much for watching this video and i hope to see you very soon